Hi, my name is Angus Patey and we're going to talk about soft proofing in Photoshop. Has there ever been a time when you're looking at an image on Photoshop and you wonder what is this thing going to look like when I send it to a print supplier or you send it to press or you send it to your inkjet printer and you get a big surprise, right? You send it to a matte paper, you send it, send it to a velvet fine art paper and you're a little disappointed, right? You think, wow, this image looks really great in Photoshop, the blacks are really vibrant, the colors are really saturated, but when I send it to my inkjet printer with the matte black ink and I send it there with a, a matte paper, the image always comes out a lot flatter. Well, there's a bunch of reasons for that, and there's certainly a way to get a heads up. Now, I'm not telling you you can make your images look a lot better, but the good news is you can get a preview of how that image is going to look before you print it. So at least you can make some small adjustments to the image to be able to compensate for that. So first, let's take a look at why do your images end up looking so much different when you start out in Adobe RGB comparatively to what's going to happen on a matte paper. So this program, Monaco Gamut Works, allows me to look at two profiles simultaneously and sort of compare the two. So we're looking at here on the left, the large color space is Adobe RGB. This is also represented by the red outline. And the inside color gamut is representative of the uh, Velvet Fine Art for a 4800 and 78 and 9800 profile supplied by Epson. Now there's certainly a significant difference in the saturation. You can see that the greens, the blues, and the purples are much more vibrant on Adobe RGB. And especially when you come down into the darker regions of the profile where the slice is going through down to the bottom of it, you can see that there's just no saturated blues on this paper and the amount of color range is significantly reduced, especially as you go down. And the amount of black density really ends about there where Adobe RGB still has a big range to go down into the blacks and those dark colors. So certainly a big reduction in color comparatively between the two color spaces and that's evident in this color space when we look at this from all angles. So I just wanted to share that with you to sort of see visually how two color spaces compare when seen in a three-dimensional way. Now if we want to compare that, apply that to an image in Photoshop, the same thing applies. We've got this image which is an Adobe RGB image and we want to see what it looks like on that smaller color space uh, within a preview. So how do we do that? So we go to the View menu in Photoshop, we go to Proof Setup, and we go to Custom. Now within the Custom Setup, we can select, and I've already gone through and done that, but I'm going to show you how I did that. So the device to simulate is called uh, SP7898VM for the Velvet Fine Art paper with a matte black MK, and it's available in the pull-down menu with, for anything that's in your color sync and your library folder for profiles is going to be shown in here. So we've got a whole slew of profiles available and I chose the Velvet Fine Art. And when I turn that on and off, and I'm going to explain these in a minute, you can see the before and after. That's showing you Adobe RGB. And we turn that back on, that's showing you what it's going to look like with the Velvet Fine Art profile. So that's pretty cool. That lets us see exactly how this image is going to be printed when sent to the device with this profile. Now what we have down on the bottom is on screen, how do we want to display this image? We can turn off the matte or the matte black and the black ink and we can also turn off the paper color. So the first thing we do is how does this image represent in terms of black density when previewed with this profile? How is it going to print when that profile is used? And this shows you a simulation of the flatter and the lack of density on that device with that profile. So that's pretty neat. We can also turn on the paper color which will bring in a slight yellow cast to the image because that paper is a little warmer than what we're seeing on screen. And generally I select perceptual as the rendering intent when I'm going to matte papers. That helps compensate with the compression of the two color spaces. And the black point compensation is something that Photoshop includes in order to be able to remap that color space to another one when the color spaces are significantly different. So you do have the ability to hit save, which I've already done. In, in this situation, I called it the Velvet Fine Art paper. So we won't have to do that again. And we can say, OK. So what we're seeing here is a preview on screen of Velvet Fine Art utilizing the soft proofing techniques within Photoshop. So for me that's really really helpful because it lets us get a heads up exactly like I said of what's going to happen with an image that starts out in Adobe RGB but sent to a printer that has a smaller color space. 
I personally don't use this when I'm looking at trying to simulate two devices or uh, a device that has a large gamut. For example, say the Epson Premium Luster or the semi-gloss papers. I find that the relationship between the screen and the print is very, very close. But when I'm going to a matte paper, a fine art paper, say the Hannah Mules or some of the Moab ones that have, I mean, there's lots of vendors out there, but the ones that are more fine art oriented, more matte oriented, this is when it's important to invoke this. It may be also beneficial if you receive an ICC profile from a print supplier, say for a light jet or a Lambda, and you want to see what, does, what is my image going to look like when I send it to them, you can get the heads up before you send it to a lab because you can then soft proof on screen what it's going to look like when they send it to their device. So you may want to ask your print supplier if they can supply you with an ICC profile for their printing conditions on that paper so then you can load that into Photoshop and get a much more accurate representation of how that image is going to print and be able to make some compensations for it if you don't like the way it looks. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this presentation on soft proofing and look for more at www.colormanagement.ca. Thank you.